Hello everyone, welcome back. This is chapter three of data visualization using Tableau. In the previous two chapters, we had looked at certain things like how do we install Tableau public? And after installing the tool, when we open it, we are presented with the start page. And on the start page, we understood that connect section is the most important section because it helps us to connect to a variety of data sources. And after connecting to the data source on the connect section, we are taken to the data source page. And here now the agenda for this chapter is to understand about the data source page, explore it, understand what are the data types in Tableau, how to change the data type, how to rename a field, how to hide the fields which are not necessary and unhide them when required, and how to give alias names. After we get connected to the data, we are taken automatically taken to the data source page. Okay, where we basically configure the data connection by dragging and dropping the tables. So let's look at that. Here I'm on Tableau and I'm going to connect to sample superstore, the data source which we had uh, explored or understood in the previous session. So on the data source page, Tableau is showing me the name of the connection type and the fact that there are three sheets in this connection. Now to use data coming from any of these sheets, I'll have to simply drag and drop. It's that simple. Most of the things in Tableau are drag and drop. So I just dragged and dropped orders in this area. Immediately down here, it is giving me a preview of the data. So once we drag and drop the tables, we get a preview of the data here and this area is referred to as the data grid. Now, it's telling me that there are 21 fields in this table and 9,994 rows. Apart from just giving me a preview of the data, here what you will notice is Tableau is also showing us the name of the field, the table to which these fields belong, and it's giving a visual icon, a queue. So what do these icons represent they indicate or they represent the data type of the fields if you see a hash symbol it indicates numerical data and under numerical tableau clearly distinguishes between whole numbers and decimals so here it is a whole number because it is row id row number one row number two row number three so definitely it's going to be a whole number similarly if you look at quantity, which indicates the number of products, for instance, two here means two big bookcases were sold, three chairs were sold, five tables were sold. So this is also going to be of whole number data type. Okay, this is also a whole number. Sales, discount and profit, which have decimals, you can notice the data type is of type decimal. Numerical itself, but under numerical decimal. And that is the default data type which Tableau has assigned to this field. Numer number decimal is the default data type which Tableau has assigned to the field. That is why default is ticked. The next data type is ABC. I'm sure most of you might have guessed by now what it indicates. It indicates text data, string data. String meaning alphabetical data, not just alphabetical. Whether the data is alphabetical or alphanumerical, for instance, order ID. So alphabetical and alphanumerical data is treated as string data. Then if you see a calendar icon, it means the data type is date. Tableau has recognized that that particular field holds dates. So you can see the calendar icon and the data type is date which is the default data type which Tableau has set up for this field. Now, what if you might want to change the data type? Generally, Tableau does a good job. It will be able to identify the data types accurately. But if at all you feel that the data type is incorrect and needs to be changed, how do we change the data type? It's very simple. You will click on the data type icon and then choose the appropriate data type from there. Let me select date and time for this field date and time. So Tableau is going to assign date and time. Actually, there is no time here. So it is giving default time, which is 12 a.m. 
And what I actually want to show you is this icon here. Okay, calendar with a clock is an indication of date and time, which I modified for this field. Okay, now I'll switch it back to date. I'm going to switch it back to date. So that is how you change the data type. Now, um, what else? We have one more data type, which is Boolean, which we don't have in Superstore as of now. But later on, when we do calculations, I will show you one field which will give output as Boolean. And the icon for a Boolean data type will be like this, T slash F. Boolean meaning the field which contains only true or false values, yes or no, zero and one. That kind of data is considered to be Boolean data. And that would be the visual cue. Next, you will also notice a globe in some places. In the place of data type, you will also notice sometimes there is a globe. So globe is not a separate data type by itself. Okay, if you look at the information, this is United States. It is alphabetical. City, alphabetical. This is alphabetical. And this is a number. And clearly, it's a whole number. So number, whole. This is all text only. This is all uh, string data type. And this is numerical whole number. However, there is something special about them. What is special about them? These fields are holding names of geographic locations. They are holding names. Though it is a simple string, it is not just any ordinary string. It is holding the name of a country, which is a geographic field. So when you have geographical data in your data source, Tableau would automatically recognize it and it will assign an appropriate geographic role. So country, you can see the role is country. Okay, uh, in the case of state, which is also string, but there's a geographic role for it, which is state. And if we look at postal code, there is a geographic role for it, which is postcode or zip code, which means there is something special about it. The special thing is it is geographical data. Tableau automatically distinguishes geographic and non-geographic, and it indicates geographic data with the globe icon. Okay. Now what next? We can also go ahead and rename a field. Uh, some, let's say I want to rename this field. Instead of shipment mode, I would like to rename it and call it shipment used or shipment preferred. So upon selecting the field, you see the small drop down icon. When we click there, there is an option to rename. When I click on the rename option, this becomes editable. Or you could simply double click on that name. Even then it becomes editable. And we can change the name. Let's say shipment mode preferred. Okay. So the name of this column by default was ship mode, by I but I changed it to shipment mode preferred. So it is possible to even rename a field. If you think some names are very technical, it's difficult to understand. And by renaming like this, it will make more sense. You can definitely go ahead and rename it. Now, let's say there are some fields which I don't need. I don't have to, um, I'll not be using them in my analysis and therefore I don't need to see them. I don't want them. I just want to get rid of them. So how can we remove a field? We can't delete it, but what we can do is we can go to that field and we can click on the drop down icon and choose to hide it. A field that is not necessary can be hidden. Let's say I'm going to hide customer ID now. Okay, I have hidden customer ID. Now, how do I bring it back? Let's say a new requirement has come where the customer or the client needs us to use the customer ID in a chart. I need it. So how can I bring it back? Okay. If we go ahead and hide a field, how do we bring it back? To bring it back, we must go to the settings option and then select this option called as show hidden fields. When we select the show hidden fields option, it will bring back the hidden fields. At least we know which all fields were hidden. However, they are disabled or they are deactive. They are not active. You can see this is uh, active field and this is an inactive field. So now we have to go to that field and then unhide it. Okay, go to the field, click on the drop down icon and unhide it. So hiding is simple, but for unhiding, you have to go to the settings option Select the option to show the hidden fields and then you have to unhide them. 
we can even give an alternate name, an alias to the values in the field. So rather than calling it a second class shipment, maybe I would like to call it as um, economy. Okay, uh, and instead of calling it a standard class, let's say I want to rename it and call it as standard mode of shipment. Uh, for first class, let's say I would like to use something called as premium shipment. For same day, I would like to call it as urgent shipment. So how can we change or give an alternate name and alias to the values present in the field? We go to the field itself, click on the drop down icon, and you will see an option called as aliases. Once I select aliases option, Tableau gives me a pop up window. So the name of that of the members in the ship mode field. Name of the members, what are the names? First class is one member, same day is another member, second class is a member and standard class is a member. Now I'd like to use a different value for them, an alias. So I'm going to click there and instead of first class, I'll change it to premium shipment. Instead of same day, I'll call it urgent shipment. Uh, let's say for second class, we'll call it economy. And standard class, let's call it standard mode of shipment. Okay, so I've given an alias name, an alternate name to the values in that field. You can see the aliases have appeared. Standard mode of shipment, economy, etc. Let me just show you all the four. So when I use ship mode or the shipment mode preferred, you see all the four are different economy, premium, standard mode shipment and urgent shipment based on the changes that we made in the data source page. Now, how do we bring back the original names? I, may, I gave an alias name, fine, but how do I go back and bring back the original names? So again, we go to the settings icon and we uncheck show aliases. Right now it is showing the aliases. If we deselect the show aliases option, it is going to show us the original names from the data source. And one very important point to remember is whatever changes we make to our data here, here in the Tableau workbook, whether we uh, drop a field by hiding it, or we rename a field, or we give alias names, or we change the data type, whatever it is that we might do, it is local to only this workbook where we are making the changes. These changes will not get written back. They will not be reflected back in the underlying data source. Okay, they are local and relevant only here. Now, after making the necessary changes to your data, after you have configured the data properly, you can now proceed to the worksheet and on the worksheet, we'll go ahead and learn how to create a variety of charts. Before that, we'll explore it and then do it. That would be in the next module. So in this module, we have understood how to configure the connection. We understood about the data types and uh, where to check for the data type, right? So we have text values, that will be alphabetic, alphabetic and alphanumerical, date values, then we have date and time, we have Boolean, okay, and numerical. Under that, there is a clear distinguish, uh, distinguishing uh, that happens between the whole numbers and the decimal numbers. And of course, geographic values, okay. Tableau recognizes geographic values and assigns a globe icon. Then we spoke about how to change the data type. Let's say, for instance, over here, date is interpreted as string. So we can simply click on that icon and choose the appropriate data type and the data type will get modified. We can also go ahead and hide a field that is not required. After you have hidden it and it disappears, to bring it back, we click on the settings button and select the show hidden fields option, which will show us all the hidden fields. Now we have to go to each hidden field and unhide it. Okay. Next, we can also unhide a field from the data pane in the worksheet. After you have reached the worksheet and you start creating a chart, if it's necessary to unhide a field, we can go ahead and unhide and we can make it active. 
So the key takeaways take, take from this module are that we explored the data source page. We understood about the data types. We looked at how to change the data type, how to rename a field, hiding and unhiding of fields, and giving aliases. Okay. I hope it was informative. Thank you all so much. And I will see you in the next video where we will explore the worksheet. Thank you.